I'm Dan Gray for Auto Tell, and this is an Audi Q3 Quattro. Now, there are very few luxury subcompact crossovers on the road today. This is one of just a handful of models. Let's go for a ride. I'll tell you what I love about this little critter and some things that I don't. The Q3 rides on the same platform that underpins the Audi A3, as well as a bunch of Volkswagens. There are two trim levels, Premium Plus and Prestige. I tested a monsoon gray metallic Premium Plus Q3 Quattro with a black interior. There's just a short list of tiny luxury crossovers to shop this one against, and that would be the BMW X1, the Mercedes-Benz GLA and GLC, and the Range Rover Evoque. If you're shopping it against non-luxury tiny crossovers, you might want to look at the Buick Encore, the Fiat 500X, the Mazda CX-3, and if you're looking to take it off-road, perhaps the Jeep Renegade Trailhawk. The Q3 is available with just one engine and transmission combination, and that is the two-liter turbo made it to a six-speed Tiptronic automatic. The Tiptronic has a sport mode as well as a manual mode. The Q3 is a pleasant little critter to drive. It's more maneuverable than large crossovers in tight spaces and handles crisply through the twisty stuff and is relatively quiet on the highway. The 2.0-liter turbo 4 produces 200 horsepower and 207 foot-pounds of torque, significantly less than the A3's 2.0-liter engine. The 0-60 to 60 time is factory rated at 7.8 seconds with front-wheel drive and 8.2 seconds with all-wheel drive. That's kind of pokey when compared to the A3 sedan, which covers the Sprint in just 5.8 seconds with a hotter 2.0-liter turbo. And when you compare it to the BMW X1, which is rated at 6.3 seconds, the Mercedes GLA is factory rated at 7.2. The EPA fuel economy ratings for the 2016 Q3 are 20 city, 29 highway for front wheel drive and 20 city, 28 highway for all wheel drive. I was able to achieve those numbers in my Q3 Quattro in a week of mild winter driving. The 16.9 gallon fuel tank provides a good amount of range. It's worth noting that Audi recommends premium fuel for the turbocharged engine, which adds a significant cost to the pump. Premium was nearly 60 cents more expensive than regular at a number of local stations in the week that I tested. That could add nearly $10 to the cost of every fill from empty. Audi does not offer a diesel option in the Q3. The wonderful leathered upholstered front bucket seats feature 12-way power with 4-way power lumbar and seat heating. I absolutely love this steering wheel. The leather is superb. There's just a wee bit of padding. On the left, you have controls for the center information display, and on the right, you've got controls over your audio and voice. Down below, on the stock, you got your cruise controls. Our tester was equipped with a technology package, which includes Audi MMI navigation, Audi Connect, a color driver information system, and blind spot mirrors. The Audi Connect system provides Wi-Fi for up to eight devices and uses Google Earth for navigation mapping. The screen is crisp, and the rear view camera is standard. The infotainment system uses a dash-mounted jog wheel, which is not as ergonomic as systems that locate the jog wheel on the center console. There are 12 volt outlets on the console, on back of the console, and in the cargo area. The infotainment system requires a proprietary Audi cable, rather than a common USB. The rear seat provides 37.4 inches of headroom, 31.1 inches of legroom, and 53.6 inches of shoulder room. Heated rear seats are not available. Wow, not bad. Four fingers of headroom at 510. There's a really nice big cutout up in the headliner that pushes it up. Plenty of room there. Leg room, that's a whole other matter. That is tight. There is a hard back on the back of these front seats with some nice cutouts there. So there's room for your knees, but it is tight. You've got mesh literature pockets on the back of both bucket seats. Seating angle, pretty good, but not adjustable. A little tough getting this center armrest out, but it is nice and squishy. There's a neat little compartment with a fuzzy liner there. And we have some pop-out cup holders right here and bottle holders in the doors. The back of the center console has a 12-volt outlet, a lock button, and HVAC vents. And up top, LED reading lamps. 
The power tailgate is a $400 option in Premium Plus. There is 16.7 cubic feet of cargo area behind the rear seat. Folding the split rear seat down provides a total of 48.2 cubic feet of storage. An easy to remove cargo area covered is standard and the center pass-through provides ample room for snowboards. The Q3 is a gorgeous little ride, but it faces tough competition in the expanding tiny crossover class. From the range of vehicles I mentioned up front, in addition to the new Lexus NX and the Volkswagen Tiguan, which is the Q3's cousin and it's been around for nearly a decade. Head over to autobytel.com to see how they all stack up.